Welcome to Inner Peace with Dr. Reese, a program that can help you become liberated in the modern world. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. So what is iridology and how does it relate to healing the body? Welcome to episode number 96. Today, I'm talking to Thad Cheatham. He's a health practitioner with a specialty in detox and iridology. And in this episode, we will discuss what iridology is and how it plays a part into our body and healing. We'll talk about how supplements and herbs can help the body, how anxiety and worries can affect the body as well, and we'll touch on the spiritual side of the whole thing. So sit down, relax, and enjoy this beautiful recording. Thad, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. What is iridology? In, in simplistic terms, the way that I can explain iridology is it really just is uh, a window into understanding our bodies better. You know, it's all of the iris fibers are connected to all of the nervous system. Mm. So anytime anything in our bodies uh, happens, even our genetic weaknesses that we inherit from our mother and father, they are recorded in those iris fibers or another name for them are the trabecula, you know. Um, and mm. that's very interesting because whenever we have anything that irritates our nervous system, we can feel it in those genetically weak areas and it shows up. And that's what Dr. Jensen and Dr. Morris talked about. But Dr. Jensen, he talked about something that I have found very, very fascinating. And I see it all the time in my client's eyes. And I see it all the time in the symptoms that they're experiencing is he talked about the neural arch. It's the autonomic nerve wreath. And he talked about that he started studying embryology and he noticed in weeks two through six. Uh, and then by the way, for all of the listeners, I get this information from his book that he wrote called um, Better Bow Care. He mentioned in that that it was his greatest discovery. And he noticed that he, when he studied embryology in weeks two through six, he noticed that the primitive gut tube, which becomes our large intestines, that's where all of the membrane of that primitive gut tube that is intertwined with the nervous system, and that's where all the genetic weaknesses get deposited. But then as the organs and glands and, uh, and body parts start to form, they bud out from that um, mm. primitive gut tube or that mm. membrane. And he said the same membrane is transferred to that same organ or gland that came out of that area of the primitive gut. Well, what happens is those same genetic weaknesses are transferred to that organ or gland that came out of that area of the primitive gut. So when we have something that irritates our digestive system and especially our large intestines, we can feel it in other areas of our body. And uh, that's very true for the heart zone because I have people all the time that they tell me they have heart arrhythmias or heart palpitations. And uh, I look at their eyes and I can see that genetic weakness right in that area where the the neural arch area is and also the autonomic nerve wreath. And also what Dr. Morris explains is the bow wall. You know, that's that whole area. And you can see it when you see how it has waves, you know, like it has spikes and waves that shows that they have a spastic colon. And that means their nervous system is irritated. You know, there's so many things that you can see there, but it definitely correlates to what the person is experiencing, you know, and, and that's why it's very important to notice those things and to be able to see it and to be able to understand. And then remember in iridology that our eyes are parallel with our body, the right eyes, the right half of the body, the left right. eye, the left half of the body. Right. So I can see so many times where a person will have a, a stronger genetic weakness on the right half of their body or the right eye, or they may have, may have heavier lymphatic congestion in the right, right or the left eye. And that correlates to that side of the body. Right. The main things that we see in iridology is the state of the nervous system, the, the, what our strengths and our weaknesses are according to our genetics. Um, 
the uh, how congested the lymphatic system is by the different colors of the iris, you know, because as Dr. Jensen and Dr. Morris uh, talk about, there's only two colors of the eye, blue and brown. Mm -hmm. And if you see blue or any kind of green or anything in a brown eye, then it's not truly a brown eye, you know, and and that's very confusing sometimes to people because, you know, they went their whole life maybe with brown eyes and they didn't realize they were really blue eyes until you start to look at their family, family heritage. You know, if their mother or their father or their grandparents had uh, blue eyes, then it's very strong per, uh, um, percentages that they do also, you know. So, right. so I really just love iridology because it helps tell us more about ourselves sometimes than we're even aware of. Right. You know, because there's been it, many times. It, it, it's, it's, it's more than a blood test. That's right. Well, yeah. it's just showing the body conditions and it's not showing the, it's not giving you the, the symptom necessarily. Cause see blood test, all the other tests, they can, our bodies are constantly in flux. They're constantly changing. Well, the eyes do change too, but they change much slower. You know, it, you know, it takes time for them to change, you know, so that's one reason why they're more accurate to show the body conditions, you know, now people don't have to be afraid of what the eyes say either, because they're not going to predict when you're going to die. They're not going to say you're pregnant. They're not going to tell you you have cancer. That's not what the eyes do. The eyes just show us our body conditions. That's why Dr. Morris, he gives out with all of his readings, your iris analysis, you know, just telling you that it's an analysis, you know, mm. it's, it's not a test. It's not a, a theory. It's not a, you know, it's, it's analysis, you know? Yeah. Right. So we can look at these photos of our eyes and then we can, if we choose to, we can get to work on cleansing and making some changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, most certainly. But the biggest thing is, is to raise our awareness because so many times people that we have, like, I'll give you another example. If I see in a person's left eye that they have a strong spleen weakness and it's genetic. It's right there in that area of their autonomic nerve wreath. And it shows also that they may have a weakness in their sigmoid colon bend. They call that the sigmoid colon flexure. If I see they have a genetic weakness in that area very strong, then they have a tendency to have worry and anxiety more than normally. Hmm. And so that helps people to understand that we're not a victim of our genetics. We're not a victim of our bodies. We just have to become aware and we have to say, hmm, okay, well, what can I do to support that area of my body? You know, and that's the way I like to explain it to people. It's just helping people to have more awareness. awareness and, how, and how would they support it with fruits and herbs and whatnot? Yeah. So remember, you know, if you if we study and follow the teachings of Bruce Lipton, Dr. Bruce Lipton, he mm -hmm. explains the study of epigenetics versus, you know, normal genetics that they teach. They've taught us for all these years. Right. Well, he's proven that our genetics change according to our environment, our food, our water, but most importantly, your thoughts, you know, so. And that's why the whole placebo, because he's, he's shown that 30% of all pharmaceutical medication is just a placebo. You know, right. why does it work so good? Because your mind is that powerful, you know? So he, he goes back to just helping us to have some peace of mind, to know what's really going on and have the whole picture. Because I've had so many people that have come to me and they never really had all these like ways of analyzing our deeper selves. And so they are kind of confused. They're lost. They don't know which way to go. They keep being, they keep feeling frustrated because they try different things and they're getting different experiences. They're having different symptoms, you know? And so yeah. they just kind of feel lost. And, and I like to take all the information. I, I have them fill out a good health questionnaire. I use the iridology and what I can see in their eyes. And then I just talk to them and I just listen to the energy in their words, you know, mm. and then I can kind of see below the surface and what's going on. And then I start to put all those puzzle pieces together and then I help to explain it to them. And then my, my uh, ways is to help them to have the light bulb effect or help them to really say, Oh, okay, now I get it. You know, cause once we get it, then we can be able to change things about ourselves, you know, cause it's kind of like, you know, a person trying to recover from alcohol or drugs, you know, if they don't realize that they have a problem, then they'll keep on doing the same thing, you know, but once they have that light bulb go off and say, Oh, wow. Okay. I do need to work on that. Then that's their first step to recovery. You know? 
So why can't I go to my medical doctor and say, doc, look at my eyes. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> well, the short and sweet answer to that is it works too good and mm. it's too, it's too accurate and it's too good of a tool to prevent illness and disease and see they don't like anything that prevents issues from happening that's why that the whole system is based on treatment only you know so see it gives such an insight on what's going on inside the person's body and also we can see things that are happening inside the eyes before the person even starts to have physical symptoms from it you know um, especially if you can get good eye photographs of your children you know and then compare those to your eyes and your parents eyes you know we can see those passing down of the genetic weaknesses and the strengths and then we can also compare it to the symptoms and the health challenges that that person had and we can see you know what's being passed down and we can also see the energetics behind that too because you know there's a a collective family energy that's passed down because I've worked with clients before that they were I had one lady her nervous system was severely shot because her mother had been under such major trauma and she became an alcoholic in her later years. And she had to really go through a lot of stress and anxiety taking care of her while she was an alcoholic. And then that really shot her immune, I mean, her nervous system. And it made it hard for her to, you know, to recover. She was having pins and needles going down her arms. That's how mm. bad her nervous system was, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 And as I was working with her, as she started to see that so much of it was the trauma that was still lingering in her body, that she started working on letting that go. And she said every time she would just let go of the stress, the worry, the fear, she wouldn't feel the pins and needles. And I've seen that with so many of my other clients. I had a client one time, she said, Thad, why is it on days when I feel good, I don't feel any symptoms, but on days when I'm stressed and I have anxiety, I feel heart palpitations and I feel pain in my stomach. And I said, that's the emotions, that's the nervous system. Because that's also what Dr. Jensen talked about too in the same book, um, Guide to Better Bowel Care. That's what's called, Guide to Better Bowel, bowel Care. Um, and he talked about the emotions in the bowels and that how the nervous system greatly affects the bowels because what happens when someone's under major fright or fear? They have an accident. They either pee in their pants or poop in their pants. And so there's definitely a strong correlation uh, with all of our systems and the nervous system. Yeah, our, our mental health plays a factor in all this big okay. time. And, you know, getting to know you, very well the last few months you know you're a very uh very spiritual individual so how would you say that plays a role in everything oh i i say it's uh it's a, such an important area that most of us don't even realize the degree of importance because why because they identify too much with this body and they think that that's all that they are you know when we have to remind ourselves daily that we are a spirit having a human experience right. and so we're a spirit number one and the spirit is eternal you know where whenever we pass the spirit goes on to somewhere else so we need to remember that this body is just our vehicle you know we want to take care of it we want to use it we want to enjoy it while it's here but it's not who we are and there's a, a very strong correlation to that when you look at cancer patients, 50% uh, of cancer patients die faster after they've been diagnosed with cancer, being told that they have cancer, because they think it's a death sentence. And, it, and if you didn't tell them at all, they would live longer. Because again, it's the mind, they identify too much with that instead of saying, well, that's just what they think. I'm going to still live my life the normal way I've been living it. I'm just going to be more aware that I might need to take care of myself more, you know, you know, I mean, you can always look at it as a positive way and not just think of it as something negative, you know? Well, one of my favorite people who was a teacher of mine back in the day is Dr. Bernie Siegel. Mm -hmm. And he wrote an amazing book, Love, Medicine, and Miracles. And in that book, he did, I mean, he was a, a top-notch surgeon, cancer surgeon for many years. And this book came out in the 80s and he details so many cancer patients who... <laughs> They got their diagnosis and they said, screw it. I'm going to do everything I ever wanted to do in life. And they do. They quit their jobs and they just do whatever. And they end up living way longer than, you know, they were, they were told they would. Yeah. That reminds me of the movie, the bucket list. 
mm. you know, with uh, Morgan Freeman and uh, Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and I kind of used as an analogy that we need to have fun and play in life. I, I forgot which spiritual giant or spiritual master I was listening to one day. Um, but he was talking about that. He was saying that is our spirit's mission when we come to this planet is to have fun and play like young kids. And I think when we start to get too serious about life and we forget that playful nature, because I see it all the time in people, especially men have a tendency to do that sometimes because we're so goal orientated. And we, we think that playing like a kid or acting like a kid is immature and not what we're supposed to do. And so you know, because I remember for years I've played like that around my dad and he didn't like it because he was like, that's not how men supposed to act, Dad. And mm. and and I'm like, well, you know, we're we're should be kids at heart. You know, that's the way I think of it. Yeah. You have a you have an interesting spectrum of health knowledge because you your parents have um, a supplement shop. Right. And so you grew up in that environment and you worked in that environment. So, you know, a lot about the herbs and the supplements and whatnot. What's the difference between the herbs and the supplements? And, and can someone find a happy medium between the two? Because some people like Jack LaLanne, I always go back to Jack LaLanne. This is, this is like my, one of my favorite guys yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. He lived till 96. That's right. And he was vital all the way up to the last two weeks of his life. He took a lot of supplements. You know, he didn't eat poorly. You know, he had he had some fatty fish and some eggs in there, but lots of fruits and vegetables. He didn't eat processed food and he took a lot of supplements. Mm -hmm. you, you take that way, push it off to the side. And then you got someone else who maybe just be high fruit, a lot of detoxing, you know, and uh, and, and, you know, they may live the same. Who knows? Well, that all goes back to the George Burns uh, syndrome, as we ah, call it. You know, it goes yeah. back to it, your genetics and, you know, we can we can live our lives in certain ways and we can't compare us to people of the past because we don't know their genetic strengths and weaknesses. We don't know how much stress and trauma and dramas they had to go through in life. They, we don't know how well or how uh, uh, how well or how strong or how poorly they took care of themselves, you know, like Jack LaLanne, for example, again, you know, he was fitness orientated. He was already into taking care of himself pretty well from a very young age. You know, he, that man did more amazing feats, man. He swam across the English channel. One of those channels yeah. Yeah. towing boats when he was like in his eighties, I think, or something. Yeah. I mean, he, he did amazing feats of performance, you know, is showing what the human body can go through, you know, but to go back to answer your question uh, for all the listeners is that, the difference, the true difference between supplements and uh, herbs is one is made by the divine and it's found in nature. And usually they bring it into the to the um, laboratory and they either powder it down, you know, pulverize it down and make it into capsules or they make it into a tincture or they make it into tea. But that doesn't alter the natural form too bad or too much, really, from the way that we find it in nature. You know, the best way is usually a lot of times pick it and consume it, you know, uh, juicing it or whatever ways we want to use it. But the difference with supplements is a lot of times they sometimes they isolate it, they manufacture it, they, they alter it, they process it, they heat it, they extract it. They don't have all of the, the herb. You just like, for example, a capsulated formula of herbs is stronger than a tincture because a tincture is just an extract. A capsule is all of the herb. It's the whole herb. You know, I remember mm. hearing Dr. Morris mentioned that before. He was like, encapsulated herbs is always the strongest because it's the complete herb. And a tincture will absorb faster, um, but it's just the extract. Um, but to, to answer your question in another way, too, is that we have to look at all of these things as tools. And my main thing is that supplements are better than pharmaceutical medication because at least they're not. A, a chemical medication or a chemical made thing, you know, uh, an isolated supplement is still something that's, you know, relatively going to give you some positive benefits and, and not as much negative uh, experiences from that, that product. So yes, you can still use it in many ways to help us. But a lot of times, a lot of your supplements are still just band-aids for the true root issue. You know, a lot of times we have to, 
help the body have that inner healing wisdom, you know, by a lot of times eliminating the cause that's keeping the body from being able to do that. You know, there's so many things that we do in life that inhibit the body from being able to function the way it needs to. You know, that's why elimination is so important and, and the opening up our eliminative channels, doing that maintenance that we need to on our bodies to help our, our bodies to be able to use and utilize these herbs and supplements and medications, all of those things better. You know, I even tell people with my clients sometimes when they have to still take medication, like, I know people that in certain situations, they still have to take pain medicine and stuff. And, and in those situations, I can understand some people because they're in massive amounts of pain. Well, I always tell those people, well, if you're going to take the medication, then you need to be responsible and use milk thistle and the herbs to help your liver and your body to recover better from that medication. You know, same thing as an alcoholic. If someone enjoyed drinking alcohol and they were like, Pat, I'm not going to quit drinking alcohol, but can you still tell me things that can help my health? I will say, well, just use the herbs and things more to help your liver since you're do using the alcohol, you know? And, and so they're all tools for us to use and they can, can benefit, benefit us in different stages of our lives. We just have to really ask ourselves, is this the best thing for me? Or is, is this just a temporary thing? Or is this just a temporary fix? Or is this just a band-aid? You know, we have to look deeper at all everything that's going on, you know, so they definitely have their place, you know, coming from the health food store industry that I've been a part of for so long. My parents have had it, this health food store for the last 15 years. We got it in 2005. And, uh, and so we've, I, we've learned so much about the industry. And so it goes back again, too, on how these supplements and these things are made also, because some, some companies make them better than others. You know, it's, it all goes back to so many different key points when you're looking into these things, you know, because um, also some of them have bad additives that they have in there to make it where the medicine flows to their machine better or the supplement or the herb, you know, they call them flow agents or fillers or additives that they put in there with our supplements and our herbs sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, so we have to look at all of these different areas and what's going on, you know, so, so I'm kind of one of those people that I'm open to anything that can help people, but we have to look at, is it getting to the root issue, the root cause, or is it just something you're going to use temporarily till you can find what will help the root issue, you know? Some cute people can address the symptoms and still live till 90. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, but you have to think just like the George Burns. I've talked about that with people many times. If he had took care of himself better, he probably had such strong genetics that he could have lived to be 120 or possibly older. You know, we don't know the potential of yeah. those people that have those strong genetics. He was but, smoking uh, those cigars. That's right. But again, also, it's, I've heard this a long time ago from some wise people. They were saying, it's not how long in life we live. It's the quality of life we have while we're here. You know, because, I mean, you can take a person that if they're, they live to be 100, if they're not happy and they're not enjoying the last 20 years of their life, then, you know, it's almost like, what's the point? You know, so we have to learn how to enjoy each stage, each decade, each year, each second of our lives, you know. You used to be a big boy. You used to be around 300 pounds back in the day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you had to turn your stuff around, right? Yes, sir. And I'm still working on it to this day because I go back and forth to in moments that I'm not, I don't always eat the best, you know, but I always remember the ways that I've done in the past to help myself to have better health, you know. How long did it take you to lose? I mean, you, what would you lose like 150 pounds? Uh, I weighed close. I weighed around like 285 around there. And okay. then I got, I got down to about 160, 170. Right. right. And, and that took about uh, less than a year, about half a year. But that was, I lost the first um, 50, 60 pounds. Uh, I lost that just through uh, just changing up my lifestyle and everything. But then I lost the last uh, I don't know, whatever was left through juice fasting and taking herbs and doing detoxification. You know, that's what helped me to lose the remaining amount, you know, because that was what I had to do to actually get my body to release that last bit. You know, when I was just, when I just changed over to solid fruits and vegetables and uh, things like that, you know, I lost a lot of weight. Yes, but I didn't lose as much as still until I started doing detoxing and cleansing and juice fasting and taking herbs, you know, all of that stuff, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then you end up in the field helping others. It's yeah. usually how it goes. <laughs> 
That's right. Yeah. I was in my parents' health food store and I kept hearing about these different things of people talking about how to lose weight the healthy way. Cause I had tried so many different ways to lose weight. And, and then I found out about this group of people that were talking about doing it with the plant-based diet and doing juicing. And so I just tried it for 30 days in it as an experiment. And it wasn't the weight loss that was the best uh, benefit that I had. And I still tell that to people today. It was the way I felt, you know, I slept better. I felt better. I felt, I just felt more aware of my surroundings. And, and the biggest thing is that I felt much more at peace and felt much more, you know, happy because the reason why is that I didn't feel all the anger and the frustration from the animal products. Cause you know, they cause sometimes that for people because of the stress and the anxiety of the animal the animal had to go through that gets locked in the tissues of the animal. And then when you eat it, it can make you feel that way, you know? And so, you know, it was just, it was such a, an eye opening moment. And I felt like, I felt that my life had been forever changed. And it was, you know, from that moment on, I could never go back to eating those things and feel comfortable about it. Did I struggle mm. with it for the next seven years? Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, but I never yeah. could stop thinking what it felt like that first time I tried it, you know? Well, you know, we have similar stories. Uh, you know, I got up to about two, two, almost 250 pounds, five, nine, a hair under five, nine. And uh, that's how I ended up losing my weight as well. You know, juicing, raw food, going on raw food for a whole month, you know, and the weight just comes right off. And, but then once you hit your goal, you know, the food addiction's still there unless you just stay with the lifestyle. And then, so there's a yo-yo effect going on sometimes with people, you know, I've, I've, I've experienced it quite heavy. Most certainly because we get so attached to food like a drug. You know, I, I didn't realize how addicted I was to food until I started to try to live a lifestyle where I regularly ate healthy or clean foods, you know, especially when you're trying to stick to a raw foods diet and not eat any kind of cooked foods, you know, because especially when we're in these cold environments, you know, because a lot of times since we've been young kids, you know, we always want something warm and comforting when it's so cold outside, you know, and, and so it can be quite challenging because every time I went to the tropics, it was very easy just to eat the tropical fruits and stuff because they were so amazing. They taste so good. And, and the, you could go to the beach and the, and the weather was so nice. And I mean, it was just easy, but you know, when we live in these tempered climates, it's, it's so much more challenging, but again, I love the challenges because every time I embrace the challenges, instead of running away from them, I grow more and more, you know, and that was what I learned from going back and forth so much, you know, is that every time I did it again, every time I picked myself back up, I, I learned and grow from that experience. Yeah. So Thad, look, you're from the South of America. <laughs> we can tell by your, your accent. <laughs> Although if I was down there with you, they'd say I have the accent, right? <laughs> That's the Bible Belt, That's right. right? You grew up with Jesus as your guy. Earlier, you mentioned that we are a spirit having a human experience. Mm -hmm. How has your views changed? Because you obviously grew up in the church and you had to in the South. That's right. I mean, it's, it's been very challenging with the spiritual and the religious component of life, you know, but what it's done is it's humbled me to respect every culture and everyone's a viewpoint on, on God and the divine and all of those things. And I've, I've not wanted to be too rigid in the way I believe in anything because there's so much deception out there, you know, and so much confusion, you know, uh, even with the, the Bible and Jesus story and everything, there's so many confusing angles and things that are out there that we don't know the complete truth. So, and, and it's hard for us to understand it because we're an Eastern culture and they're an, I mean, a Western culture and they're an Eastern culture, you know, and they, so many of their habits and day-to-day -day activities are so different compared to our own, you know? So, so really what it did is when I started working with people all over the world, it really helped open up my mind to, that, you know, we can't be so closed minded and feel like, oh, just because they don't believe the way we do, they're in the wrong. You know, I, I started just opening up my mind to, you know, not having an opinion one way or the other, but just respecting all opinions, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you and I have had talks about books that we've read and stuff. You have a, a, a wide variety of books that you have ingested, you know, including the Gene Keys. You said you really like the Gene Keys by Richard Rudd. 
Yes, sir. Who was just on this podcast. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Gene Keys was very amazing because it shows such insight into the reason why we think and act and the way we are and our our goals in life that we want to do that are passions for us, you know, and things like that. You know, I, I've used it many times. I've had some of my clients that have just went on his website and filled out their free personal profile. And they said they cried after they read it because mm. they they said nothing had explained themselves in the way that they're the way they acted, the way their goals were and everything about themselves like that, like he did in his, just in his free profile, much less comparing it, you know, your whole uh, Gene Keys profile to the book, you know? Yeah. 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 And one of the largest takeaways that I took away from the Gene Keys was Gene Key 24, Hmm. where he talks about our addictions, how they're in the astral body and how we get so hung up on fear and how we don't, we don't realize and that we're, we can be a slave of fear, you know, and, and I, I realized more and more, the more I'm aware of it, then I could just learn to just let everything go and not have even fear of death. Like I try to imagine myself living every day, like it's my last and just being grateful for what I've got to experience. And then when I wake up tomorrow, it's another wonderful, uh, gift or, or blessing, whatever you want to call it, you know, and, and then that way that you kind of feel not so in fear of what the future holds or feel so upset or disappointed in the way that your past has went, because, you know, it's really an illusion because when we're in the past, it's just the present moment. We're in the future. It's just the present moment. So really all we ever experience is the present moment. Yeah. And when we're on the health journey, fear can come up. These symptoms can be crazy. You know, I, I, I dealt with it 10 years ago. I'm dealing with it now. And, and the mind can just, can just mess with you, man. That's right. You know, but again, these are things that come up to help us when we really need them to, Um, you know, and we have to be able to see them as there to help us, you know, because there's just so many different ways to look at things. You know, sometimes people go through horrible traumatic events. Like I'll give your listeners a good example. I had um, a client one time I gave him a reading and I said, you have an upper lung weakness. And he said, wow, that, I don't understand why you would say that. I've never been a smoker, never been around people smoking. I've never uh, um, been a big dairy drinker or other consume other foods that would really congest my lungs. And I said, well, you remember that uh, trauma and depression can affect the lungs because that's what the uh, traditional Chinese medicine says. And he, when I said that, his eyes got big. He said, well, Thad, that makes perfect sense. He said, a couple years ago, I lost my son. He committed suicide over a girl. And he said, it broke me down so hard, I lost the will to live. He said, but something beautiful came out of it, though. He said, it brought me closer to God. He said, because before that, I didn't think nothing of that. I didn't mm-hmm. believe in any of that. And I always felt lost, like I didn't have direction and meaning in my life. And he said, but because of that trauma, it helped transforming to to be a more open to things. And then that was what led him to me because he found out about Dr. Morris and all those things. And then he even came to me and I don't get that very often here in the South, you know, and, and cause we have very, I have very few people in the South that actually come to my parents' health food store that have any deep understanding on what we're talking about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. God can help so many people. That's right. And, uh, somebody could be an atheist and still be good too. Um, yeah, that's Some, right. somebody could be a mystic following the myst, the path of the mystic. That's right. Which, all of all of our spirits have a certain purpose on this planet to experience something. And I'm still I still don't know completely what to think about reincarnation. I'm not c- completely ruling it out. And I'm not saying that it's true either. What I'm just saying is that I kind of like to think about it as I want to enjoy and, and uh, appreciate the life that I have now. And then if I get to come back again in another life, hey, that's a bonus again. But <laughs> sometimes sometimes people get so hung up on the reincarnation thing. They think, oh, well, what's the point in what I'm doing now? I'll just come back the next life. You know what I mean? And and it kind of makes it where people don't appreciate as much what they have now. You know? yeah. Right, right. So many different paths for many different people. Mm-hmm. And we got to stop judging each other and. That's right. You know, the Muslim should be able to get along with the Jew and the Jew should be able to get along with the Christian and the Christian should be able to get along with the atheist. That's right. Because as soon as you start judging another, you're really directing that back on yourself. 
you know, because um, that's why that they all the greats, even the Bible said, do not judge others for they you shall be judged. Now we can we can observe someone's fruit and see what kind of fruit are they putting out, you know, um, but we don't have to still judge it in a negative way. I think that's for the divine, you know, the divine to judge us, whether it's right or wrong or good or bad. But again, how can he really judge us so harshly when he created all this, you know, <laughs> it's just all part of the big, you know, big thing of life, you know? Yeah. It can, it can be a beautiful mystery. That's right. That's right. I'm an open book. I've been having some, some difficulties and you've been one of the people to, to reach out and help. And I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And yeah, man, just, it's just something, something I got to go through to, to transform in some sort of way. That's right. I mean, I say everything that comes up in our life, we need to stop and just welcome it, you know, like say, okay, how are you here today or in my life at this moment to help open my eyes to something that I need to see more clearly, you know, and that's really, if we can do that instead of having fear or concern or worry, you know, we can see the deeper meaning behind these things sometimes. Um, but again, it's, it's just all about having deeper awareness, you know, on what's going on, you know? So where can someone find you online, Thad? Um, I just simply my name, I have my website, thadcheatham.com, you know? Yeah. They can just check me out on my website and, or they can con uh, connect with me online on Facebook. You know, I, I have a Facebook group it's called journey to Wellville and inspired from Dr. Morris, you know, mm -hmm. him always talking about that. Cause I always like the, that saying, you know, uh, you know, it's just good to be on a journey of raising our awareness to help us to have the best health we can, you know? Yeah. yeah. Wellville. Yeah. <laughs> Right on. All right, Thad, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your friendship. You're very welcome, Kevin. I appreciate you having me on today to talk with me. And, and uh, I wish you and all your listeners uh, such great happiness, peace and joy out there in the world. And just try to let go of all fear and worry and anxiety. And just know that the divine has everything planned out for you just the way it needs to be. Thanks for listening to Inner Peace with Dr. Reese. If this episode opened your heart, feel free to share on social media and tell your loved ones. Also, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Until next time, may peace be with you.